Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel, and I'm now answering question number eight from the International A Level at Excel, October 2021, Pure Mathematics P4 exam. This question here again is about integration, part A. It's just uh, telling us to integrate the. It doesn't really. This part B is about the graph here. Part B, A is simply just telling us to integrate this expression x squared times the next with respect to x it doesn't tell us how to integrate it but it's quite obvious we, we need to use integration by parts as you have a product of two separate functions and this cannot be integrated in, the, in another way it has to be done by parts here so in when we're integrating by parts we normally choose the x term like x squared term whatever as our u because that breaks down when we integrate it well when you have a linux that takes precedence because when you integrate that, when you differentiate that, sorry, that becomes uh, something that breaks down also very easily. And um, so it's, whenever you have Linux, it's, it's easier to just take Linux as your u. And we're going to take dv dx as our x squared, which you normally wouldn't do. But in this, this is one case where we do, do, we do that. So that because when we find the differential of Linux becomes 1 over x. So du dx is 1 over x, and this part we have to integrate. So v becomes x cubed over 3. So this one we have to differentiate, this one we have to integrate. And um, the rule for integration by parts is found in the formula book. But when you set out your work in this way, I, don't, I never even look at it, because I just simply do, I always put my u on my left, and dv dx on my right, underneath u, I write du dx, underneath dv dx, I write v. And I know that I have to multiply u times v, so it's always this times that first. So it's going to be x cubed times x cubed over 3 times lin x. Then I have to be minus the integral of this times that. So it's minus the integral of x cubed over 3 times 1 over x. Well, when I multiply those together, I'll have one third. I like to write the constant outside. The x cubed and the x will cancel, leave you with x squared. And I've got to integrate that with respect to x. So now it's simply just this stays as it is. And now I have to finish this off by integrating what's inside here, which integrates quite easily. You have minus one third. Now that becomes x cubed over three. Okay, plus c. Okay, and now I've got my answer just simplify it have x cubed over 3 times lin x minus x cubed over 9 times x uh, sorry x cubed over 9 plus c and there's the answer to part a of the question just simple integration by parts and there's the answer so now we're going to go on to part b okay now for part b it says figure 3 shows a sketch of the curve with equation y equals x lin x. Uh, the region R shown shaded in figure 3 lies entirely above the x-axis and is bounded by the curve, the x-axis and the line with equation x equals e. This region is rotated through two pi radians about the x-axis to form a solid of revolution. Find the exact volume of the solid of revolution of Sorry, find the exact volume of the solid formed, giving your answer in simplest form. All right, so this equation here, or this graph here, is rotated around the x-axis, okay, to form a solid, a three-dimensional solid. In one of my previous videos, if you look at my integration playlist, you look at the volumes of revolution, I've shown you an, an animation of how this works. Um, so you could refer to that to see the animation maybe i'll put a, a link of to that video in the at the end of the uh, video i'll put a link somewhere at the end, the end of the video where you can see um it'll take you to the animation video where i sh explain this um with the animation but basically what's happened is is that this whole region is rotated around the x-axis so it's like it forms this kind of like strange type of conish type of figure with these curved edges so it'll go round wrapped around the x-axis okay now form this kind of three-dimensional kind of cone trumpet type of shape 
and um, we need to find the volume of that shape. So basically what we do is we split it up into small, small tiny little cylinders, okay? And we, take, we find the volume of each of these cylinders and then we add them all together using integration. So each of these cylinders, if you know, if you, if you think about the cylinder, that will look something like this. It's not that very good of a drawing, but they'll look something like this. And this would be, for example, here, this y value of this point from the x, x axis to that point. That would be like the y value. So you could say that's the y value of the points on this line. And the thickness of the cylinder is this, which we've kind of magnified here a bit. It's a very thin little slice in the x axis. So that's going to be like, call it dx. So the volume of a cylinder we know is pi r squared, which is, the, is like the area of the face times the height. So here the r is a y and the height is how thick this cylinder is. So we can say the volume of each of these little tiny cylinders is pi times y squared times dx and we want to find the sum of them, all of them from the point a to the point, let me call this b for now, this point b on the x-axis. So if we find the sum of, and which this is kind of what the integral sign means, the sum of all of the uh, volumes of each cylinder Okay, from A to B, um, so the volume of each of the cylinders is pi y squared dx. So when I integrate between A and B, I find the volume, I find the sum of all the volumes of all the cylinders that are formed between A and B when I rotate them around the y-axis like this. So this is the formula for the volume of a revolution, okay, in um, integration. That's how you find the volume of a solid formed um, when you take the the, the graph of the function and you rotate it around the x-axis. So that's what we have to remember. It's just like a little explanation of where it comes from. You don't really need to know that, but um, if you know where things come from, it's, it's always better. So basically, we've got to take this equation here and we've got, to we got to put it into this form here. So I like to use it like this, pi times y squared dx. I'd like to put the constants outside and I need to find the x1 and x2 values, um, the limits where I have to rotate it around. So we already know that the x value of this point is e. I need to find the x value of this point. Now this point here is when y equals 0. That's the point here where the curve hits the x-axis when y equals 0. So if I take my curve and I equate it to 0, I have two solutions, either x equals 0 or lin x equals 0 x equals 0 we already know, but we're not going to be concerned with that. We need this other point here. That's when lin x equals 0. And if you remember, lin x means log to the base e x. So there's like a base e. So this means e to the power of 0 equals x. So x equals e to the power of 0. That means x equals 1. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So this is the point 1 on the x-axis. So what I'm going to do now, and I'm going to say that the volume of this revolution is pi times the integral between the limits of 1 and e of y squared. So y is all of this. So it's x times lin x all squared dx. If I find the value of this, I found the volume of revolution that I'm looking for. So this is the same as pi and this is like x squared times lin x all squared dx. It's not the x that's squared here, it's the whole thing that's squared. So I can't use the power law to simplify this and integrate. Okay, if it, was lin, if it was lin x squared, I can then write this as 2 times lin x, but I can't do that. It's not the same as this. Okay, this is the whole thing squared. All right, so now I can use integration by parts again. So if I think of my the x squared um, as my dv dx and my lin x all squared as my u, so I can inter differentiate this and integrate that, that should work. Now... The limits are between 1 and e. So what we had earlier isn't quite what we've got now. This is x squared times lin x. I've got now x squared times lin x squared. So I can't use this result at the moment. So let me just um, start from scratch. Then I said u is equal to lin x all squared. And dv dx is equal to x squared. So du dx will be, using the chain rule, 2 times lin x x 2 times lin x to the power of 1 times the differential of what's inside the function which is 1 over x 
and our v is going to be x cubed over 3 add 1 to the power divided by the new power so I can use now don't forget the pi u times v which is these two multiplied which will give me x cubed over 3 times all of lin x squared um, okay that will be that I don't need to put over anything so it's x cubed over 3 times all of lin x squared minus the integral of now I'm going to have these two multiplied so if I think about they've got 2 times 1 over 3 that's 2 thirds as my fraction and then I'm going to have lin x times 1 over x times x cubed so the x cubed and the x will cancel give you x squared times lin x dx okay and that's the limits e and 1 now what we have inside here happens to be exactly what we had to integrate before okay so we can use this result now we can use this result let me just take this result and take it down here so we can use it this is a result from the first page so instead of reintegrating everything again I can use this result here we know that that's true from the last page so let me just re re reuse that result over here so I can just incorporate that in here replace this okay with with that okay so I have v equals pi don't forget the pi this is x cubed over 3 times lin x all squared minus 2 thirds times now I can replace this with x cubed over 3 times lin x minus x cubed over 9 okay and I can close my bracket here and no plus c needed because this is now definite so let me just simplify this a bit more so v equals pi times I'm gonna have x cubed over 3 times lin x in brackets all squared minus 2x cubed over 3 times lin x plus this is going to be 2x cubed over 27 2x cubed over 27 okay this is going to sorry this is going to be a 9 here be very careful not to make silly mistakes that's 2 over 3 times x cubed over 3 that's 2 2x cubed over 9 and that's 2x cubed over plus 2x cubed over 27 okay so we're almost there now we're ready now to put these values in so I'm going to take these values and I'm going to I'm going to take this and put it on the next page okay so now we have um, to put in the value of e and 1 and subtract so don't forget the pi out here you have e cubed over 3 times lin e squared minus 2 times e cubed over 9 times lin e plus 2e cubed over 27 minus and then you're going to have to put 1 in here now that's going to give you 1 over 3 times lin 1 now lin 1 is going to be 0 so that's going to become 0 and again lin 1 is going to be 0 lin of 1 is 0 okay so that's going to become 0 so you're only left here with 2 over 27 2 times 1 cubed over 27 so that's all you're left with there because 1 in here will give you 0 0 times this will be 0 lin of 1 with 0 0 times this will be 0 as well so you're left with just this so now we're almost complete let me just simplify this um, now we know lin of e is 1 so this is e cubed over 3 again lin of e is 1 so that's minus 2 e cubed over 9 and I'm going to have um, plus 2 e cubed over 27 minus 2 over 27 so we can combine a lot of these like terms together so let's just put everything over 27 so this is times 9 that's 9 e cubed over 27 this is times 3 so 3 twos are 6 6 e cubed and this is already over 27 almost there so v is equal to pi times this is 9 minus 6 plus 2 that's going to be 5 so that's 5 e cubed uh, minus 2 all over 27 we can just write it as one fraction 
So that gives you 5 e cubed minus 2 over 27, and this is units cubed. That's the volume of revolution of that shape when it's rotated around the x-axis. Okay, so they wanted it in its simplest form. Find the exact volume. This is exact, so it should be in terms of e, um, and in its simplest form. So there's the answer to that question. Um, I hope that was clear. It's a bit of a long-winded one, but it's... Uh, you have to do a lot of this kind of a manipulation at the end. But I guess you could have used a calculator for a lot of this stuff at the end. It's not a big deal. All right, so thank you for watching. Other questions which are related to um, this paper, October 2021. All the other questions from the paper should be found in the playlist that should appear in this area at the end of the video. Other questions to do with volumes of revolution you find in the playlist that will appear here. And I will try to put a link of a video a particular video where I have the animation of volumes of revolution that you can try and refer to if you want to understand, if you have a, a doubt about how we get the formula for the volume of revolution, I'll put that somewhere over here at the end of the video. You can click on the link um, over here to, to um, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon.